talking Rutgers basketball midweek, Wednesday, March 27th. Aaron Brightman, the Scarlet Faithful podcast, and a lot of activity, a lot of things to talk about with the offseason so far. Again, very early on, just the second week that transfers can enter the portal. Rutgers being mentioned more and more now. Jared, Jerry Carino came out with an article uh, on Wednesday. He had an interview with Steve Peichel on Tuesday. And uh, I, I first wanted to touch on a quote from uh, Steve Peichel just in terms of uh, his approach to rebuilding the roster. I thought it was uh, insightful. Uh, this is Peichel speaking. I quote, we have a huge head start, Peichel said, compared to last year. I know the needs. We need some age and guys who can shoot the basketball, but more important, guys who are excited about the opportunity next year. Uh, and then this quote specifically um, talking about, uh, I'm looking obviously for toughness and an ability to shoot the ball and experience, Peichel said, but most importantly, I want people who are excited about the excitement of next year. We've got a unique situation that's going to be fun. I want kids who are willing to jump into the competitiveness of that. And we've got a lot of positive early feedback on that. So that was in reference also to what's now been reported. Zach Martini forward from Princeton set to visit on Thursday. He, uh, Chris Sanakas of 24 seven sports had it first. I believe uh, Brian Fonseca reported it also uh, but uh, Martini telling Sanakis that, you know, he met with Peichel already. Surely a good sign that it's going to be on Thursday. Uh, shot close to 38% from three last year on 150 or so attempts. Uh, high offensive rating, top 100 nationally. Uh, not a physical big guy in terms of rebounding a defense. Um, but what I love about Martini is obviously he, he's a winner. He's a Jersey kid. Uh, he can shoot. And... Recruiting him, for me, signifies that, you know, I know everybody's talking about hiring an offensive coordinator and all this stuff. Um, if you remember back a few years ago, Peichel praised the way that Michigan played with John Beeline. And how did John Beeline play? He played spaced out in the half court. Five guys uh, all could shoot and spread the floor. And it creates driving lanes. And with Ace, Dylan, and Jeremiah, if you have bigs that can stretch the floor – create better spacing and can hit shots from behind the arc, you're going to create opportunities for your best guys to get to the rim and, and to create space and spread the defense out and make your, your offense much more difficult to defend. And going after Martini is a guy that's going to help you do that. Whether he, you know, I, I, I don't know if he would start or come off the bench, but he played a prominent role and 153, Three point attempts, you know, you make 38% of those. That's <laughs> that would be, I mean, Rutgers would have killed for that this past season. They didn't have anybody close to that. So, uh, really encouraged by him and obviously a high character guy, uh, coming from Princeton and just uh, everything I've heard about him. Uh, so excited about that. But then also new development in terms of Matt Alaco, his teammate, um, Jerry Carino referenced, keep an eye on him as well. Uh, and then, um, also. Uh, the potential for him to visit, that would be obviously huge. And the fact that Rutgers is pursuing Alaco, uh, I mean, he would be unbelievable uh, addition for the program. Uh, he uh, also top 100 offensive rating nationally. Uh, but, you know, uh, he's also, uh, I mean, he's a starter on uh, the Sweet 16 Princeton team. He, uh, let's see, in terms of his numbers, yeah, he's uh, – 63rd nationally with 126 and a half offensive rating. He shot 91% from uh, the foul line, 15th best nationally. He shot 56.9% from two point range on 137 attempts, 366 nationally. And he shot 42.6% from three on 108 attempts, which is 75th nationally. Uh, he's got a high assist rate. Uh, he's just a really smart player. He's a tough player. He's got a ton of experience. Um, I think the competition is going to be steep for him. But the fact that they're, you know, they have Martini coming, uh, you know, if they can get Alaco to visit as well, uh, they got a real chance here, you know. And, and Jerry mentioned he's got more New Jersey family connections. Uh, he's from Ohio, but uh, I think his dad played high school in New Jersey. I think there's some others as well, other connections there. So uh, this is really promising. Um, you know, the whole mindset mentality out there that, you know, Rutgers can only get high major guys to come. Otherwise, you know, it doesn't mean that, I mean, I mean, there, there's, people paying money to hear that, you know, if they're not approaching, uh, if they're approaching high major guys with certain point per 
per game averages. Uh, Rutgers is ill prepared on the recruiting trail with NIL. It's it's I mean it's it's ridiculous. Uh, this is college basketball. There are a lot of great mid major players, and if you got Martini and Alaco, Rutgers would be in really good shape. Uh, it is super early. You don't even have a, a, a certain high major kids in the portal yet. Uh, they're still playing. Um, you have Rutgers in, in a position now where the roster, you know, they have five scholarship guys that are in the portal. So that's three openings as of now. Still waiting to hear on, on uh, Oscar. Um, so we'll see. But they have room to work with. And listen, if you're getting Martini and potentially Laco to visit uh, right now, that's that, that's a really good position to be in. Um, you know, and I think you have to go back to relationships too. You know, Michael's talked about the portal being speed dating. He's not just going to bring in random guys. I think they're doing their due diligence. I think they're, you know, uh, obviously exploring as many options as you can. And I, I, I've gotten complaints like, you know, oh, they're, they're, you know, they're not being very active. They're not mentioned in tweets. Well, Rutgers doesn't necessarily want to be mentioned in tweets. You know, th th there's differences between due diligence, reaching out to a, a portal guy, you know, having real interest and actually pursuing a guy. And they all get kind of, mumbled into one tweet, right? And it can be misrepresented, you know, depending on other targets they're, they're, they're pursuing, uh, depending on guys on the current roster, depending on, you know, wanting to limit the potential for negative recruiting, uh, the whole NIL piece, which is a huge part of this, please don't, you know, I, I, I it's killing me when people are like, well, I don't understand why he would leave or I don't understand. It, listen, NIL isn't necessarily the top priority for everybody, but it is a factor in every decision that's made with the transfer portal now. It just is. That's part of life. That's that's just the way it is right now. I'm not here to debate the, the, the sanctity of college athletics and the NCAA screw this. Yes, of course, you know, there needs to be some kind of control and regulation here. But this is what it is right now. And if, if you're shocked that a guy went into the portal, why would he go into the portal? Uh, NIL is, is, is a big factor into why, right? And that's just part of it. And to, to suggest that Rutgers is ill prepared for it, it's just not true. And I think that will come to fruition in terms of how they land. But just in terms of uh, the class they have coming in, you know, what they've spent on NIL in the past season, I could tell you that, you know, listen, Rutgers is, is prepared for NIL. And uh, they're working really hard in terms of this offseason to improve the roster. And, uh, you know, you have to think they have a, have a, a, a puncher's chance here with Alaco now which, you know, wasn't necessarily, I think, the, the, I thought earlier on uh, is a really, really good sign. They're, they've also been linked to Amari Williams. I know Richie Schneider and Mike Broadbent have talked about him on the night report. They do a great job there. Uh, I, I believe they said, you know, the asking price is really high. It's over half a million. I mean, that's part of it too, right, with NIL is market value. What's the real market value for these guys? And and what are, what are you know, portal targets asking for. I mean, Amari Williams has good numbers. He was very good, but he at Drexel and he's asking for, you know, top dollar. So he would be a great fit, I think for Rutgers. And I think there, there's real interest there. Um, but again, we'll, 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 if Texas is pursuing him, I mean, Texas could pay him whatever they wanted. Uh, is Texas have other targets, you know, that that's part of it too. So there's, it, it's still early on in the process. A lot can happen uh, in terms of how things shake out. But Rutgers is certainly in the mix. Uh, there's the, the, the guard, Dirkek, you know, it was reported that they were interested in him, the NAC player of the year. Uh, it sounds like that's uh, kind of cooled off. It sounds like UConn has interest. So there's all these low mid-major guys that end up in big places. You know, we've seen plenty of examples of it uh, this past year. You know, and I mentioned D'Amico from Southern Illinois as an example. He ultimately went to DePaul. Um but, you know, look at, uh, you know, uh, Martin Damask and uh, uh, Marcus Damask and uh, Lance Jones from Southern Illinois, his teammate, you know, have excelled uh, at Illinois and Purdue this year. Uh, I mean, there's countless examples. Maybe I'll even make an episode of just examples of mid-major guys that have done really, really well at the high major level. Um, but uh, that is part of it. But relationships, right? I mean, uh, in terms of connections with coaches, you know. Uh, players that you have that know guys, right? Uh, the, there's the uh, the kid um, uh, that just came out in the portal, Dante Maddox from Toledo. He's going to have a ton of suitors. Uh, Rutgers, he indicated uh, the 24-7 sports Rutgers has reached out to him. He's a 6'2 guard. He, sh he shoots 40.1% from three on 444 three-point attempts. 
you know, someone wrote on Facebook, you know, well, can he play in the Big Ten? Guys, th this guy's going to have so many offers. And it's, it's probably, he, I, I don't know. I don't know if he's attainable. I don't know if it even makes sense based on other targets they're working on. Uh, and again, it could just be due diligence, could be interest. He is from Chicago, so he knows Jeremiah Williams. But th there's just, there's so many possibilities and there's so many options. And Rutgers has, it. it's, it's a chess match. It's a puzzle. They got to fit it all together. But the fact that, you know, if you're not hearing every day of Rutgers in on three or four guys, that doesn't necessarily mean they're not, you know, in on a lot of guys. And there's a lot of possibilities right now. Um, you know, like I said, not being on lists isn't necessarily a bad thing. It avoids certain issues. Um, I think NIL just has changed the game in terms of how you portal recruit versus high school recruiting. You know, Rutgers could add another high school guy, uh, you know, onto the roster. Uh, I, I think it, it, it's clear they're trying to add experienced guys at the college level. Uh, Jerry mentioned they're exploring JUCO ranks. You know, I heard of, of a, a big they were really high on at one point. Um, you know, Jerry mentioned an international big, or Steve Peichel said it in a quote uh, that they're, they're they're potentially targeting. So, um, you know, I think that's the focus that makes the most sense. And again, you have to the culture of this team. Everyone has. To, I, I like how Peichel touched on the excitement of next year. They want guys that are excited about the opportunity, and I think. He has urgency for next season, and he needs guys on this team that have the urgency. And what does that mean? That means I've talked, I've stressed for, for, for multiple episodes here about needing hoopers, guys that live in the gym, that live and breathe basketball, that want to succeed, and are going to put everything into next season. And that's what they need. They, they, they have a certain level of talent coming in, meaning a very high level of talent with Ace Bailey and, and Dylan Harper. You have Lathan Somerville. You have... Uh, also uh, Bryce Storch and Dylan Grant, but they're freshmen and they're going to need help. And you need guys surrounding them that have the experience, that have the toughness, that, that have been through wars, have been through adversity, you know, and, and, and they're going to make this team, fill this team out in a way that you have guys in roles that they can excel at and that everybody accepts. It's, it's, it's a giant task. There are no guarantees. It could go dis disastrously wrong. But Everything I'm hearing, everything that Steve Peichel is saying, it all points in the right direction. And it all sounds like everyone understands the moment and is working towards seizing it. And that's what this all has to be about. It's not about the name on your jersey. It's not about what school you played at. It's about what have you done? What is your skill set? How do you fit into the dynamic of the team? And how can you help Rutgers win? And that's what it's going to be all about. And it's going to be about NIL. Can they add, do they have enough to get them there? But to, to suggest that this point of the offseason, it, it, it really grinds my gears. The, the idea that, you know, we're going to suggest that Rutgers doesn't have NIL uh, and, and is ill prepared for this moment when they're in the moment right now. And all signs, if you're, re if you're reading the tea leaves, if you're paying attention, they understand and they are prepared and they are in on a lot of possibilities that can massively upgrade this roster. There's a lot of rumors out there. There's a lot of just misinformation out there. I'm not going to engage in it. All I'm going to tell you is to keep your head above water and unfortunately be a little patient. I'm just checking my notes here to see if I missed anything. Um, but yeah, NIL context and everything, right? And why guys are leaving and why certain guys are being pursued. Certain guys aren't. It, it's all, it's all, it's all has to do with that. You know, a uh, little news also Antonio Troll lands at Howard. Good for him. Good program, been in state tournament last two years. Hope he succeeds there. Uh, Cliff, you know, the whole idea that he was earmarked for St. John's appears to not be true. Uh, he um, uh, canceled a visit this week, and he uh, apparently is taking a bunch of Zoom calls. I believe Adam Segoria uh, uh, put that out there. So, listen, Cliff's going to demand uh, – the, the reports are out there are crazy. He's going to get a ton in NIL. And, yes, as an international student, you can get NIL. Uh, I, I tweeted at somebody yesterday. There's a difference between active NIL and passive NIL. Active is when it's an act of labor, right? Passive is when your image is actually being used on a billboard or a promotion or whatever. So he can earn that as an international student. You can also go overseas. So, And I can tell you, Cliff earned significant NIL at Rutgers. That That is a myth. If, 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 if it's out there that he did not, not true. So 
like I said, there's a lot of misinformation out there. It's moving fast. Help you decipher right uh, kind of accurate versus inaccurate and just where I think Rutgers is moving and the approach of the staff. And that's what I'm focused on. Uh, last thing, just in terms of, uh, yeah, the timelines, like I said, it's, it's just getting started here. And there's guys that potentially might end up on the Rutgers roster that aren't even in the portal yet. And I don't mean that as like they're working it behind the scenes. I just mean there are things that are going to come along, right? They're, they're, it's not, they're not going to land their top three ABC plan, right? But they're going to have multiple options. And this thing's a developing situation. The bottom line is Rutgers has a clear idea of what the roster is going to be, uh, what they have coming back, what they need to fill, and they're working hard to do it. And I'm super excited about the possibilities with this team and just encouraged by Steve Peichel's comments in the media to, to Jared Carino, the visits that's happening this week with, with Martini. Hopefully they get a Laco uh, visiting as well. Uh, you know, they need to get a big, no doubt, but you got to get shooters. You have to get hoopers, guys that are going to live in the gym, guys that can shoot. Toughness, experience, defense. That's what Steve Peichel gets paid the big bucks. He's going to be able to scheme the defense, but you got to have players to play up tempo, to play, to, to be able to go far. I mean, listen, you watch the NCAA tournament. Yes, there's getting stops, but look at teams. I mean, look at Houston surviving, scoring 100 points the other day, right? They're the top defense in the country. They scored 100 points in overtime to advance to Sweet 16. You got to score points. You got to score points. Michael realizes that he's adapting. It's adapt or die. I think he gets it. He has urgency. I'm super pumped. Thanks so much for listening to the Scarlet Faithful Podcast once again, and I'll talk to you soon.